guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Noah, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Keychron K4 version two. This is a wireless mechanical keyboard with an impressive feature set, attractive starting price, and one killer feature that completely changes the keyboard game. Let's jump into it. So the pricing starts at $69 and increases in tiers as you add features like RGB, aluminum plating, and its killer feature hot swap, all the way up to $99, which is the version I have here. Before I jump into that, let's talk about what comes in the box. So inside, you've got your standard ingredients for a pre-built mechanical keyboard, braided USB-C to A cable, keycap puller, key switch puller, some extra keycaps in the instruction manual. There's nothing really surprising here. The Keychron has such an impressive feature set that I was actually really excited to try it out, but it turns out the keyboard's actually just fine. Like the whole thing is just fine, but also kind of great, sort of. I'll get into that. So this is actually the second iteration of the keyboard, if you couldn't tell from the title. And there's only a few subtle improvements from the first version, like Bluetooth 5.1, a relocated delete key, and an inclined bottom frame. To me, the biggest improvement is this grayscale color scheme. The first one had this ugly brown color, and I'm not really sure why they ever did that. My first impression of the board overall was that it was a lot lighter and a lot heavier than I thought it'd be. The keyboard's actually a plastic built case with just some aluminum plates around the edges. And the profile is quite high, but I like that the frame inclines and even has additional kickstand feet for added ergonomics. On the left side, you have switches to toggle on Bluetooth or wired mode, as well as switches to change the modifier keys between their Mac and PC settings. And at the top right of the board is this light bulb, which toggles between the various RGB functions. There's nothing really fancy here. There's no software or anything. You just hit the light bulb to cycle through the 15 modes, and then you can use the function and arrow keys to go through different colors for each mode. One thing I absolutely adore about this keyboard is its form factor. It's a 96% layout, meaning that you keep all of your essential keys like arrow keys, function row, and number pad, but it comes in just a much smaller package, saving a lot of space on your desk. I have a full-size Ducky 1-2 keyboard and it's much smaller than that, yet not quite as small as say a TKL board. I really like the colorway and font. As I said, it looks way cleaner than the version one of the keyboard. Unfortunately, the keycaps are this really thin, really cheap ABS plastic, which doesn't really feel all that great to the touch and is already collecting a lot of finger shine. It also has a significant amount of key wobble due to the combination of the thin plastic and these Gateron brown switches. I would have preferred PBT keycaps here and would have happily paid a bit extra if that was an available option. Overall, the build quality is good, but the use of cheap materials in certain places kind of drags it down for me just a bit. I've used Ducky and Durgod keyboards in the past, and even though they're plastic built, they just feel slightly better than this keyboard does. What those keyboards don't have is wireless functionality though. This one does. You can pair up to three devices by holding down function plus one, two, or three, and it pairs easily and quickly with my work MacBook and my PC. The battery life has been amazing. I've had to charge it like once in three weeks, and I never notice any connection lag when typing or gaming. Though regarding gaming, I just would not game on this thing as it comes. First off, I had connection dropouts while gaming, which was really frustrating, but I was able to fix it by going into my Windows device manager and adjusting these really specific power management settings. Regardless, I still wouldn't game on this thing as it comes because the thin plastic keycaps and those switches just wobble horribly, like I said earlier, and holding down the shift key to sprint, for example, it just felt very loose. And on that note, the typing experience just kind of, it kind of fell flat. It was kind of lackluster. I'm just gonna say it. Gateron brown switches suck. There's hardly any tactility on the down press. Like I'm scared to think about what reds feel like. Also because the case is a plastic case and they use really thin ABS keycaps, there's this pinging and ringing noise that I can faintly hear every time I press down. So overall, the typing experience is not great, but there's actually really good news here. I've yet to talk about hot swap, which is the killer feature of this board that you can utilize to take this keyboard to an entirely different playing field. 
If you're watching this video from some small channel in the recesses of YouTube, you might know something about custom mechanical keyboards, but for the viewers who don't, what custom keyboards allow you to do is kind of finesse to a T the exact sound signature, feel, and look of your keyboard. Up until recently, the custom keyboard space has been expensive and intimidating since it requires a lot of research and there wasn't a lot of help out there. Now, there's some incredible keyboard content creators who have amazing builds and tutorials, and of course, Geekhack and Reddit are full of information. What Hotswap allows you to do is enter in that realm of the custom sphere by adding your own switches to the keyboard without even thinking about a soldering iron. So, that's what I'm about to do. K4V2 that I just built. And what I did is I used these popular tactile switches called the Glorious Panda switches. And essentially what that means is they have this little like tactile bump that occurs as you press down on the switch. It's like a little bit of a resistance. It's not like Cherry Blues, it's more like the Cherry MX Browns. Blues have this loud high pitched clicky noise that I think is really annoying and it's more stereotypical of mechanical keyboards. So in addition to that, I got this lubricant called Tribosis 3203, which basically softens the sound signature of the switch. Put all of those in, I added a little bit of keyboard foam to reduce that hollow noise. To top it off, I bought these cool white minimal PBT keycaps I got from AliExpress, who won't let me delete my account for some reason. By the way, if you wanna learn anything about any of the things I'm talking about, switches, keycaps, building, all of those guides, please go check out the description for links. There's all those content creators I mentioned earlier, and they have a wealth of information about all this stuff, so on and so forth. Please go check them out. They're really awesome and really knowledgeable. So I've been using the finished keyboard for a while now, and it's so freaking awesome. Now, you won't be able to necessarily feel what I'm talking about, but I can at least demonstrate what it sounds like. Nice. Now, I'm not sure if I would recommend the Keychron to anyone as it comes. It just feels kind of okay out of the box, and you can spend a little bit of extra money to get a much nicer pre-built, unless wireless is important to you. That being said, this keyboard really opens up the door to people who are just looking to get into the hobby, or if you just want to make your one perfect, solid, wireless, daily driver keyboard. I can even game on this thing reliably now. That keyboard wobble is completely gone. You can make your one perfect keyboard, play around with it, and not have to do anything else. What I love about Hotswap is that it takes a huge part of that intimidation factor out of building keyboards. If you've built a PC before, this is just as fun and just as rewarding, sometimes even more so since you actually have a tangible feel for your work. So for a $100 starting price, I don't really see a better entry-level option for this form factor and feature set as long as you plan to mod your keyboard. That's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit like and comment below. Would you pick this keyboard up? Is there anything I left out that you wanna know about the keyboard? Let me know. Thanks again, and I'll see you later.